excitement that we're dishing out in the house today. But now it's time for Sir Paul McCartney's new single, My Only Baby. Take a look. Oh, oh, yeah. oh wow, no other baby but you. Oh, yes! Oh, what a video! That was, of course, Sastic. Sir Paul McCartney with his latest single, No Other Baby. Do you know what? Here he is in the shed! Yeah. Paul, first question I have to ask you, uh, the nation waits with bated breath. Yes, Johnny. Do you have a shed? I have a little shed, yes. Do you have a shed? Just a place you go to escape from... A woodworking shed, yes. A little where I whittle and plane and... Yeah, you, know, you whittle. <laughs> I'm a whittler, yeah. <laughs> um, and you go there, do you go there to compose songs? No. Where do you to, do that? To decompose. To decompose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just go... For the same reason people go, to get away from everything, you know, and sand a bit of wood. Okay, where, where, where'd you go, where, where, where'd you go to actually when you're writing songs? Where's your songwriting place? I've got a little room in the house with a piano in it and a guitar. See, I put it to you, that is a shed. It is a type of shed. Do you see what I mean, the metaphorical shed? Do you see what yeah, I mean, Gary? Yeah. Do you see well, what I mean, though? Yeah. Do you think he's a little bit too hung up on sheds, viewers? <laughs> I don't know, is it a sickness? I don't know. It okay. could be, Johnny. We saw your latest single, No Other Baby There. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't find a copy of the track. No. So tell us the Originally, story. Yeah, tell us the story of this track. Um, I was going to make this rock and roll album, so I just thought of some songs that were from way, way, way back, and I just remembered this one. I never had the record till after I'd made the album, and then EMI very kindly gave me the record. I looked and I thought, I recognise that. It took me back about you know seventy years or something. Okay, so you, if you've been going through, I mean, on the album, there's a. Do you know, what, I'll talk about that after the break, actually, because we're going to really get into the substance of that and the yeah, records on. Yeah, let's do it. It looked like you had a night just going through your record collection for your favourites and thought that 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 and that. Well, my memory rather than my record collection, yeah. The, the jukebox of the mind. Of the mind. <laughs> the shed of the jukebox. The shed of the. Yeah. You, it's a sort of sh jukebox inside a shed inside your mind. Yeah, yeah. it really is. I suppose <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Do you know what? After the break. <laughs> After the break, it's the it's the paper review. Uh, Sir Paul will be with me for the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen. Don't do that, <laughs> McCartney. That's fun. Don't let me down. I, I, I bring a, you a, on telly for a, the first a, time. A, he, sorry, Sir Paul. That's not like it. That's I bring a knight of the realm on the show. First time he's been out for ages. In his Look shed. What you do. Yeah, but it's the shedness of it all. Well, you know the house that'll follow. Uh, it's his big breakfast. Uh, join us after the break, please. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Go, in case yeah, absolutely no time because very rudely Johnny Vaughan has left Sir Paul McCartney <laughs> sitting on his own oh, in no, the he's shed. Not, he's got a massive entourage oh, with him. He'll be uh, all right. Well, well we're going to get down and uh, chat a bit more to Macca. No, but let's right let's now he's in charge of the fab entertainment system of Thatch of the Day. Hey. Play our comedy. gentlemen he is without doubt one of the most famous men on the planet he's written some of the most memorable songs in history oh. and it's not often we can say that on the show is it no, no. Oh, not really. normally we have s club seven on. <laughs> <laughs> and after two and a half years away from the recording studio he's back with a critically acclaimed new rock and roll album please welcome the man the legend Sir Paul McCartney yeah! Yeah! Do you know what, before we chat, yeah. uh, fully and frankly, yeah. we're going to have another peep at uh, the video for your latest single. Here it is, ladies Let's and gentlemen. Do it. Oh, right. I don't want to like you do. Hey. Oh, yes! Oh. 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 Fantastic video. Well, very, very you. simple. Still simple, meaningful. What was the thinking behind doing it? Why did you decide to do it like that? And the director said he had an idea. <laughs> and I thought, me in a rowboat? Mm, not sure about that. Mm. So I met him. And he was very convincing. Pedro Romani, he just said, and I heard him talk. I thought, right, ring in the end of the nose, lead me around. Did you get wet? Um, a little bit. A little bit. But, little you know, bit. I'm a rough, tough cream puff, John. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can handle it. You're rough, you're tough. Uh, now, your latest album, feature. actually, I'll tell you one thing I wouldn't have done if I was you on that video. Mm. There's one bit where you got bare feet. Uh, now, you know the trouble you got in last time. I and you know. did bare I feet on the that. Abbey Road. You don't take your shoes off. The, the maniacs go mad. I know. The Americans think I'm dead again. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I am. Never know. <laughs> oh, maybe this is all part but of it. You never know. Ooh, 
We actually filmed this in 1998. <laughs> ah, yeah. OK, now your latest album, it does feature 12 cover tracks from artists including Elvis, Chuck Berry, Little Richard. What, what made you decide to return to your early musical influences? It's just the kind of thing, you know, I always wanted to do. It's one of those, I'll make a rock and roll album one of these days, you know. And um, finally got round to it. It's really simple as that, actually. Uh, Lynn and I had been talking about it the last couple of years, and she'd always been saying, you've got to do that, you've got to get round to it. It's one of those things, you know, you say, yeah, I'll always do it, never get round to it. Mm. So I decided I'd better get round to it. So I did this year. And have all these songs got a particular sort of happy memory attached to them? Or yeah, that's good? how I chose them, actually. Instead of kind of looking for, like, the classic, definitive... Because they're not all sort of... They weren't all massive no, records No, no, a lot of them aren't. A lot of them no one's even heard of. Even in the band, you know, I'd say to some of the guys, you've heard of this one? No. And they pretty much know a lot of them, you know. But um, that was how I chose them. I just sort of thought, either I'll go into the record books and look for the best-selling or the best-crafted, <laughs> or I'll just think... What's a song? You know, and I immediately remembered being on the fairground with my mate Ian James in Sefton Park, trying to pull birds, yeah. and the waltz are going round, and this song playing called Fabulous. So I just wrote down, all right, Fabulous. And then next one, No Other Baby. Just remember. So it was just whatever came into my mind. I thought, if I've got kind of a warm memory about it, then when I come to sing it, I'll use that. So I did, just pulled them out, and thought, ooh, I'm back in the fairground. Ooh. But, you know, and did, you ever, did, you, did you ever uh, sort of jam any of these when you were John? Did you? Uh, these are the ones you played as, um, as, as lads. Yeah, there were one or two. Uh, Brown Eyed Handsome Man Classic. was one that uh, he nearly did with the Beatles, but we never got round to it. But, you, um, have you seen the film Backbeat, incidentally? Yeah. Because quite weird. Because in that film, it's reminded me that you started out, you know, with the Beatles as just a band playing covers. Yeah. In yeah. the club in Hamburg. Were these some of the ones you... Were there any here you these played are, as part of the These are them? probably the ones we never got round to, but we played this kind of thing. The reason was that if you were playing on a bill, and be maybe three or four bands, if you went on about third or fourth, the other two bands that went on before you often played your whole act. Yeah. You know, you'd be sitting <laughs> here, one and I say, long tall Sally, oh my God, what are we going to do? So we started, started to think, well, we've got to look for obscure tracks or start writing songs Who ourselves. Who hit on the genius idea? I know. Let's write some songs. Let's write them ourselves. I think I was the... Uh, is it your idea? I think so. Oh, yeah. Take credit for it. I, I like to think... it was my like idea to, to stop <laughs> doing covers. <laughs> my idea. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know, in truth. It was just something we had to kind of do, but it's nice to think that, you know, the big sort of Lennon McCartney big deal thing only arrived, really, to foil the other bands. And which, which was the first song you actually you, you wrote, then, to either with Lennon or...? or um, the first one, really... Well, we wrote a few. Um, there was the one first one you can think of. The first one you can think of. It was, it's never been released. It's called Just Fun. They say that our friends are just fun. The day that our friends have begun. Uh, there's no blue moon that I can see. There's never been in history. We went, oh, Sample no. it, release it. Christmas number one. <laughs> we're away, we're laughing, we've got that. It's all the lyrics we need for a song. That's all you need, man, yeah, no. Nice strong beat under that and we'll be mm. fine. Okay. Um, now, this is the first time you've stepped back into the limelight since Linda died. How difficult uh, have the last eight, 18 months been and, and what's been your sort of story during that time? Uh, it's been, you know, really difficult, actually, because, you know, I was privileged to know this lovely lady for 30 years, you know, and uh, we had a great relationship, a great time, raised our kids and stuff. And I suppose, you know, like anyone, you expect to still be sort of at 80, just on the rocker on the back porch, you know, but it wasn't to be. So it was very, very difficult, yeah. And people said to me, oh, get busy, get busy, anything, don't just sit on your own. Mm. But I thought, no, that's kind of too much like denying the whole thing. So what did but you find is the best kind of uh, therapy, or well, not therapy, but the best way of... Uh, well, with you know, I mean, even though I'm a tough, macho man, crying... Crying. You know, if you just, you can't help it. You just sort of sit, depends who you're sitting with, of course. But if I was with the kids or good friends, I just start talking and think, oh, I'm going to cry now. Instead of going, don't, just go, Wah, and start talking to them, just talking and letting it out, really. And that's what I did for about a year. And I thought, you know, hope this will end at some point. I think I gradually did kind of get most of it out, most of it, you know. So for a while, was it was about when people sort of avoid the topic, and by avoiding it, they always bring it up just as badly. Yeah, yeah so I'd bring it up. Yeah. You know, I just was like, oh, you know, what do you want to talk to me about? Isn't that, isn't it? Um, it's always one of those difficult things, you know, when I, if, I, if I have a friend and they lose someone close to them. Yeah. You know, I, I never know, I think as humans we find it really difficult to know, we want to help them so much, we don't yeah. know how to. What, what, is, what, what sort of help did you get and what is the best way we can help people? Well, I think talking about it was the thing, really, you know, and not denying it, not pretending it hadn't happened, because that's worse, you know, you're sitting there thinking, 
he or she knows, I know, yeah. but we're talking about sheds or something, you know. Yeah. Subject well, crops up in every dead silence. Sheds, yeah. Yeah, sheds. Yeah. Well, the sheds no, but, um, yeah, no, so I think, you know, just being honest was the thing, you know, and just talking about it. So, uh, like I say, after about a year of that, I did start to feel a bit better, you know. Just start to write, I'll get round to that rock and roll album now. Go and shout a bit in the studio. Rock therapy. Rock therapy, man. Okay. <laughs> Strength through rock. Hey. Um, <laughs> Now that you've gone back into the recording studio, uh, can you see yourself now concentrating on music for a while? Is that now back in there, that's it, no more absences? Yeah, I think so, you know. I mean, I never know that I'm going to be absent, so I just take it by, uh, I play it by ear, you know. If I don't fancy it, I won't go out, kind of thing. But, but what, uh, what, what kind of um, drives you now? I mean, obviously, you can see what drives people early on in their careers. You yeah. can see what money. drives people with money. Money, And then on, you yeah. can see people being driven by sort of music later on, like, I want to prove I can. It wasn't yeah. just about money. I can be, but what sort of drives you now? It's not so much proving it, because I think, you know, in many ways I've proved it, you know, being in the Beatles. I think it's safe to I say you've proved it. Does anyone it. here question Paul McCartney's <laughs> musical credentials? But, um, you know, so it's not so much that. I'll tell you what it is. It's just I love it. As simple as that, you know. And which bit do you love? Do you love the composition? Do you love working things out? Do you love recording? Do you love playing live? What's, what's, the, what's the... I love them all. Just love the live? Yeah, I love them all. I mean, I, I always love the idea, you suddenly, like, what'll happen with me is, I'll suddenly have a couple of hours when I'm doing nothing. I mean, I was in New York recently, and I was staying in this big posh hotel with this plate glass window with a big view of Central Park. Mm. And of course, this, this suite came with a piano. Nice. So I think a couple of exactly couple like of hours hotel rooms I get. This is yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think you know it's like Cole Porter time or sort of uh, you know, Hoggy Comet. So I just sort of sit down and and you know if I'm lucky a song will come. But it's kind of like magic for me still. But Here's I'm, another big hit. You know, yeah, I wish. <laughs> so it's not. But like um, no, you know. So I just actually like this latest time. I'm telling you about the. In about an hour, I just kind of finished this song up, just wrote the words down. I thought, hey, that's great. Call a few of the mates in. Hey, listen to this. Hey. Hey. hey well, they hey, all come hey, in. Hey, 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 pull, down, pull, down, pull, hey, hey. Right, okay. Do you know what? We can come back in a while, and you can have a chance to About reflect. a week or so? In about a week. A week we'll come so. back in a week. We'll wait in the shed for a week. Yeah. Uh, so we leaf for things leaf, to do? We could leaf through my gardening, Max. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know what? Um, Sir Paul McCartney's joining us all morning in the shed. The shed is honoured. Uh, we're back in a couple of seconds, please. Do not go away. You're watching The Big Breakfast on Channel 4. Big breakfast on Tuesday, the 16th of November. Um, I'm Johnny Bourne. This is uh, um, Jimmy Hughes. <laughs> Jimmy Hughes. This is Jimmy Hughes, formerly Sir Paul McCartney. Um, are you planning to do a Millennium Night gig? No. That's something I'm definitely not going to do. I suppose you don't need the money. Well, no, it's not that, Johnny. It's, it's a do. You've got to be at a do, not, yeah, working. not working. Millennium Night? Are you uh, working Millennium Night? Yeah, I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you? What about? are you doing what, then? Come um, on. We're doing a show from 12.15 onwards. Oh, well, can I just well. say, if, if you haven't... I'll be watching. If you feel like a party, yeah. drop down to the house. Uh, everyone's families are going to be yeah. there. Yeah, okay, You won't John, get any hassle. I might do that. <laughs> I might just do that. I shouldn't no, think no, the Sergeant Beatles won't even crop up. Okay, uh, so what, what are you planning? Are you going to have a... I'm going to have a family do. Okay, do you know, we, we asked you a while ago, well, I asked you just in the last little segment, yeah. what bands you like today. Yeah. And have you thought? I never thought. Of you. Well, I've been trying to think. Uh, yeah, you know, I like a lot of them. I don't really keep up, tell you the truth, you know. Um, I was on the show the other night where Travis were on. Mm. Oh, those are good. They're good lads. What about like Oasis? Songs. Oasis are good. Yeah, Did I'm you ever listen to it and here. think, sounds familiar? A little bit, <laughs> just a bit, yeah. It's, um, for me, it's a great tribute. And there's such a sort of back catalogue now of music that everyone's got to have been influenced by something somewhere online. And the and thing is, you know, Liam's called his son Lennon. You <laughs> see, we're, we're, we're trying to work, and I'm trying to get my son to have a son and call him Lennon. Then he'll be Lennon McCartney. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, there you go! Ladies and gentlemen, new to the West End, Paul McCartney. Uh, John, we're going to be chatting some more. We've got Phil Gale now. He's our Big Breakfast newsman. Let's Actually, go over you, to Phil. Do you know what Paul said to me earlier? Yeah. He said it's the only thing worth watching in the morning. It is the oh. only one, really. It's the only one. And Sorry, he was, the only thing was he was talking about Phil Gale. Here he is. <laughs>
Good morning. These are the main stories on Tuesday, the 16th of November. Oath for an end to the war over beef. Why CCTV's heading for the playground. And it's tats out as Mel C Sports' her latest acquisition. There's a new hope for peace in the beef war with France this morning. The European Union will today recommend that Scotland and Northern Ireland will be mainly wet with heavy snow over high ground tomorrow and Thursday. Northern and central regions will have rain and sleet all week with bitingly cold north winds. And the south will have some sun tomorrow, but expect sleet showers and cold winds for the rest of the week. Big Breakfast News, 8.34. Now back to Johnny. Uh, joining me this morning in my humble shed is one of the most famous men in the world. Where is he? Yeah. I don't know, he went out. He's coming. Uh, he gives few interviews. We're honoured to welcome Sir Paul McCartney, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Thorn, thorn, grovel, thorn, grovel, thorn. grovel. Now, there are so many questions we'd like to ask you. Yeah. Questions of depth. We decided to do what the Big Breakfast does best, which is keep it shallow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on, on this no expense spared wheel are the names of people connected with different aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. This is as shallow a way you can get of interviewing really a man is, of greatness yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. It's cheap. We really pulled out all the stops to make yeah. this worthless television. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to spin the. You ready to spin the wheel of cheapness? I'm ready. If you are. Work wheel of cheapness. Work. Oh look! Look how cheap that is. Look at this. Oh, I spin the wheel oh, of cheapness. Sorry, the wheel. David Bowie. David Bowie. Well, uh, he's a, a bit good lad. Buttery. He's very good, David. Um, story about David. Um, yeah. I've got down here. I, I might get. Here. You painted a portrait of David entitled "Spewing Bowie." That is true. What happened is I do a bit of painting. And are you good? I'm brilliant. I'm modest with it. No, I, I'm, I'm all right. But you know, it's not for me to say. Not for me to say, Johnny. I've had mixed reviews, you know. Um, <laughs> I've had a mixed bag. Yeah, mixed bag of it. Um, yeah, I did a picture that I kind of make these pictures up, like faces and stuff, and I, then I title them just so that I can remember which one people say. Well, I like that picture. Is it which one is it? Number five oh three. Oh. Well, I'm never going to remember. So I just stick a title on it and sort of say, Bowie Spewing. Oh. So then it was going to be exhibited at the exhibition I did in Germany recently, so I had to write to him. Dear Dave. Do you mind? No hard feelings, love, but I've done this picture. And he said, send it over, you know, give us a gander. Were his exact words. So I did. I sent him the thing. He said, nice one. And he said, no problem whatsoever. Is, it, is your pal of yours there, man? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I don't know him that well, but I've known him on and off for many, many a year. I've met him once. His eyes are strange, aren't they? Yeah, somebody hit him when he was a kid or something. In fact, I met the guy who hit him recently. <laughs> his claim to fame. He said, oh, I might yeah. I'm the guy who gave Bowie the funny eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very nice. It's a great claim to fame. So we got a good story. We got an so, anecdote. Okay, it's shallow, yes. It's but shallow, look, what, yeah, we, but look what we brought out. Yeah, look good. what we See? did. Yes. yes. Okay, should we spin it? Let's spin, spin it again. Uh, Wheel of Cheapness. What? Next. <laughs> okay. Michael uh, Jackson. Jackson, man. What's well, he like? He's a good lad. Um, he's, he's, no, no, no. Whoa. Oh, Can you right, honestly right. say Michael Jackson? <laughs> so he's a good lad. <laughs> I, I know we're keeping it shallow. Okay, John. fair enough. Fair um, enough. Now, he's, uh, I don't know him so well these days. We've kind of fallen out a little bit over one or two things. But I. We've fallen out over oh, Beatles songs. Yeah. Because he owns them all, doesn't he? Well, he actually only, only owns half of them now. I think it's dwindling fast or something. So it's all, it's all very uh, controversial. If, all he, if he hit hard times financially, would you attempt to buy them back off him? Well, it's not him anymore. It's Sony. Oh. It's all moved, you know. I mean, the thing is, you know, you, I don't think I'd ever attempt to buy them back. Because, you see, it cost me nothing to write them. And now they're like billions. <laughs> so it, I, you can't It costs me nothing to write them. That's true. That's true. It's a but shallow you, but, statement, but, but it's but, true. But you, but you, but you bought you bought all Buddy Holly songs. Yeah, no, I bought those because what happened was because uh, John and I, John Lennon and I, never had our own publishing because we were too young. You know, you know, everyone wants to get a deal, so we signed like anything and signed away all our rights and stuff. So there's no chance of me really getting them back. Mm. Um, so, as I got kind of into business a bit later, I, one of my advisors said, you should get into publishing. I said, well, you know. And uh, that turned out to be Buddy's stuff, which is great, really, because, I mean, it's, it's a business you love. I love his stuff. So it's not like I'm dealing in brushes or sheds, even, yeah. you know. Well, not so, sheds, man. Not although sheds, sheds could, could be a good line of business. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, are you ready for this? We're going to spin I, the wheel I'd, of cheapness. I'd like a little spin of my own, actually. Okay, do you want to spin it? You spin it. Do you want to spin the wheel of cheapness? Of course, you spin the wheel. If you want to spin the wheel of cheapness, you can get right ahead. Now, where's he got? Elvis Costello. Sung at my wedding. Did he? Yeah, he did, yeah. That's my wedding experience in my life. I don't want to go into that because we want your story. He's a lovely boy. Yeah, um, 
yeah, what can we say about him that hasn't been said? Do you know, really? look here, see what, look, look, see what they say about him. See what they say is uh, Elvis Costello, you've said that Elvis Costello is the closest writing partner to John Lennon. What makes a successful writing partnership? Um, what makes a successful... Uh, both of you being good and able to write, and then honesty with each other. Because the thing is, you can sit down with someone and they go, yeah, that's great, Paul. Wow, that's fantastic, Paul. And you write a not very good song. The uh, thing about Elvis is he is his own man. So mm. if I sit down with him, he'll say, no, I don't really like that. And so I'll go, well, I don't like what you just did. <laughs> and we just argue. Well, just it, automatically. It, it, <laughs> um, you know, so in other words, we're very honest with each other. So anything we write is something that we both like, which is handy. He's not a yes man. So, Alan, what, when, when, good, when you do write, write a song with someone, so what do you do? You actually sit down with them and you yeah, two normally, of you are together? Yeah, what I do, normally do is the same way I used to write with John, who's, uh, with an acoustic guitar, with a guitar. And the interesting thing is, because I'm left-handed, they're, they're normally right-handed, John was and Elvis is. So it's like looking at yourself in a mirror, right. and the same for them. It's just kind of interesting, you sort of can see your chords like in a mirror. And... Um, so well, that's, how you used to write, that's how you used to write with John. You used yeah. to sit down there, yeah. just with the guitars, obviously. Yeah. Most of your songs together, you, you, you Nearly all there. of them, yeah. And either one of us has got an idea for a start, and then we finish it. Yeah. You know, John would of, often have, like, the first couple of lines. I once had a girl, or should I say, she once had me. Good. And we don't, and we carry on and finish and it And it turned up. out it was good as well, that It was good. Oh, yeah. That was a good one, yeah. Um, so I do the same Did you start blazing really? rounds with John while you were writing? No. You never, never sort of thought, you never, ne you, never you know, when I you mean, talk well, about the honesty thing, you say, that is rubbish. No, nah, no, it never occurred. I mean, the nearest we got, we used to sit down and write this way for about three hours normally. Then we got very bored and wanted to go home. So, but three hours was about the stretch. But uh, the nearest it ever got was on a song called Drive My Car, mm -hmm. which would beep, beep, and beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know. <laughs> it. Um, and uh, I arrived with this fairly good tune and everything, but... Crappy lyrics. What were you It was like, um, I can give you dime, golden rings, golden rings. I can give you golden rings. I can give you anything. And it was like, ooh. And we had a deep, sad moment, you know. Uh -huh. So it was like, <laughs> I'll tell you what then. Look, let's just have a cup of tea and a ciggy. He was smoking then. And we'll just uh, relax for a minute. And after that, we kind of jollied up. And we, I said, well, I'll tell you what then. How's about it's this girl in L.A. and she wants a chauffeur and you can... And then once we got that idea, it just... You said you should make up stories like that. Yeah. Yeah, too. yeah, I do it like that. John and I would do it like that. Uh, George Harrison doesn't. He once said to me, he said, I don't know how you do that. You know, um, Desmond and Molly and all these weird characters. I just like that, like I'm a novelist. I just make them up, you know. Because yourself finds its way into songs anyway, whether you mm. like it or not. Um, but we'd do it various ways, but it would nearly always be that. Or, you know, like, for instance, showed up at his house one day, I'd, I'd driven out from London, and I'd lost my licence because of a speeding offence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I was being driven out there, and I just happened, as I was pulling up in John's drive, I was just talking to the driver, and I said, well, what kind of a week you've had, you know, have you had? Been working hard, you know, you know as you do. He said, I've been working eight days a week, Paul. <laughs> so I like literally went, fell into John's eight house. Eight days a week, son, is what I've been doing. Work, eight really? days a week. I thought, mm, and I had a hard day's night. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Well, that was Ringo. Oh, was Ringo. That was Ringo, yeah. And Ringo used to mean them. Ringo would say these mistakes, you know, he still does sometimes. But he'd just say things like, oh, it's been a hard day's night. And me and John would go, <laughs> Did he say, hey, right. you can have that? Do you know what? I think we can spin it one last time. You want me to spin? Go on, you spin Let it. Because last spin. time we had it on it. I know, I was telling that. That was good for us. That was good for us. The Queen! The Queen! God. Okay, my question about the Queen to you is, uh, she awarded all the Beatles with an MBE. Why would you give it back? I didn't give it back. Didn't you give it back? Johnny gave it back. John gave it back. John gave it back. Do you know back. why he gave it back? Yeah, it was like some political reasons. I think it was Biafra. The government, we were doing bad things in Biafra. And he was in a very sort of political mood. And so he sent it back. And then the other reason was because uh, Instant Karma, which was a record, was going down the charts. Right. That that's was the a, other that's one he cited. That was as, as good a reason as Good any. reason to hand back your MBE. I think, you know, the truth was that the MBE is like, it's the lowest one they can offer. I mean, I is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful because we, <laughs> no, we no. were very well just say you're coming across as exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> no, no, but when you think of like what the Beatles had done, you know, and all this sort of stuff, and there was like uh, various other people who maybe hadn't done as much for Britain. Why do you accept the, do you, the knighthood ceremony? Just yeah. take me through, did you, was it an enjoyable day out or quite Yeah, it was good. Out? No, it was good actually. I'll tell you the truth was, um, I was kind of wondering whether it's sort of the right thing to do, you know, a guy from my background. What would be, why would you be reticent about doing well, it? It's just because it might change your life, you know, because everyone then, well, it, like, you know, 
you get things like that mm, on the big breakfast show. And, you know, I, I get a little bit embarrassed about all that sort of stuff because I don't think of myself like that. Um, so it was just that, that it might change your life, you know, all the people you know. So, what should I call you now, sir? Well, you know, um, I'll tell you what it was. The good thing was, in the end, when I did go and do it, with this slightly sort of embarrassed head on, um, afterwards, my kids were saying, oh, so great, Dad, you know, seeing you, the queen and the sword and all that. So we're so proud. That actually did it for me. I thought, yes. This is good, you know. <laughs> um, listen, this album is out. Run, devil, run. Yes, sir. <laughs> Includes the hit single, No Other Baby, uh, which you've just seen the video of all morning. I've been in the show with Paul McCartney. It's been a blast. Support, thank yeah, you very much for coming down. Nice Paul McCartney. Yeah. Well, you know what? This is Channel 4. You're watching The Big Breakfast. We're here smiling on your dial every day of the week. See you later.